Hey guys, how you doing? Back with another video. This one is with coilovers comparing Asian manufacturers, i.e. China, Taiwan, with the European manufacturers, i.e. Germany and uh, Great Britain. Your European, your British manufacturers will be Eibach, Kony, KW, uh, Spax, Gaz. And then the Asian manufacturers, the Taiwanese manufacturers will be uh, like XYZ, BC, uh, I think G-Force is one, uh, D2 suspension case for basically companies like that. And this specific video is concentrating on height adjustment only. So there's a big difference in philosophy between the Asian manufacturers and the European manufacturers of coil. So the European manufacturers do the height adjustment via the uh, spring seat and the Asian manufacturers do the height adjustment via the uh, bottom bracket. So I'm going to look at nine key points and I'm going to score the Asian manufacturers against the European manufacturers and at the end we're going to come up with a winner. Point number one, ease of manufacture. The independent bottom bracket is arguably an easy, easier thing to manufacture because you don't have to put any unique mounting brackets onto the damper itself and you know the manufacturing process I think is probably easier so ease of manufacture goes with the independent bottom bracket and I'm going to give that 1.2 to the Asian manufacturers because ease of manufacture is potentially uh, cheaper for the end customer then we come on to uh, race use which of the two products is most suitable for racing well, I would say because you've got a greater height adjustment with the independent bottom bracket, I'd say the independent bottom bracket is uh, more suitable for race applications. Replacement costs. Arguably, if, you, if something goes wrong with a damper, if you break it, dent it, it's in an accident or whatever, there's more chance with the independent bottom bracket type uh, suspension that you're only going to need to replace the damper or the bottom bracket and potentially that can be cheaper than replacing an entire strut if the bottom bracket the bottom mount of the damp bottom mount is welded directly to the damper itself if you damage the damper you've got to replace the whole strut the whole unit so replacement costs the Asian manufacturers have uh, have the edge there as well. Uh, ease of adjustment. So, ease of adjustment. So, to adjust either of them, you're, you're going to need the same tool, like a C-spanner. I think they've got pluses and minuses to both of them, guys. I think we're going to call that a draw on the height adjustment. Uh, bump travel. So, if you are adjusting the height of the height of the, the right height of the car via the spring seat, the lower you make the right height, the less bump travel you have. So, the bump travel in the damper is directly related to the right height that you run. Generally speaking, the more bump travel you have, the better. Whereas with the Asian kits, with the independent bottom bracket for right height, you can set the suspension anywhere you want height-wise and the bump travel is completely unaffected. That's a win for the uh, for the Asian manufacturers. Range of adjustment, i.e., you know, what's the maximum height, uh, the lowest height that you can set them. Well, because with the uh, with the European stuff, where the spring seat is adjusted, where the right height is adjusted with the spring seat, you're limited in how low you can go uh, because of the bump travel and you're limited by how high you can go if you ever wanted to go high for whatever reason you're limited in how high you can go by the uh, length of the spring i.e. The, the spring has to be connected to the top and the bottom of the uh, coilover strut at full extension otherwise there's a chance that the uh, spring becomes dislocated and you know when you settle back down it's not mounted properly on the car so you're limited with height and you're limited with how low you can go with the spring seat whereas if you have the independent bottom bracket you can go very low extremely low and potentially 
maybe you can also go extremely high. So with regards to height adjustment, that's a win for the Asian manufacturers. Weight. Because there's less components, when you're adjusting the ride height through the spring seat, hypothetically you'd think that damper unit would be a bit lighter. From a weight perspective, that's a win for the European manufacturers. What the difference is in weight, I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say probably half a kilo maximum. The ease of setup. Because you've got so much range of height adjustment with the with the independent bottom bracket, it's going to be harder to find the optimum ride height for the car. And with regards to adjustment with the spring seat, because you're sort of guided with regards to spring length, with regards to how tall you can make it, and, and to a certain extent how low you can make it, plus maybe you get some uh, guidance from the uh, manufacturer with regards to the ride height with the European manufacturers, which maybe you don't with the Asians. I'd say ease of setup is going to be uh, with the spring seat height adjustment for sure. There's going to be less ways you can go wrong with a spring seat height adjustment. So I'll say that's a win for the uh, European manufacturers. And I would say that ease of setup has got to be worth, uh, we'll say, one and a half points because it is such a big thing. And then we come on to the last one, and this is probably the big one is the chance of, of setting the ride height in a dangerous way. Now, for all the reasons I've said with the, uh, uh, with the bump travel and with spring length, there's only, so f there's only so much adjustment that you've got with the height adjustment with the spring seat. So you can't really go far wrong with it, to be fair. Whereas you cannot say that with the height adjustment with the uh, bottom bracket because you've got so much range of adjustment, there's big potential to set it at a completely inappropriate length. So maybe some people wanna slam it on the ground and they want it for looks, okay, that's great. But maybe that's gonna cause you know dangerous issues that the person doesn't understand until they take the car out on the road, until they've driven it. Um, but that may be not the best way to find out that you've got a, you know, this, a suspension is dangerously low. So what what are the possibilities? What could happen by setting a suspension too low? So I'll just come, just go through some points of potential problems. Uh, bottoming out. So, and I don't mean the suspension. I mean the car bottoming out on the uh, on the road if you set it too low. Now. That could be bottoming out, you know, when you're parking up or when you're going over a curb. But depending how crazy you've gone with a height adjustment, which you do have the do have the ability to do with the independent bottom bracket, you can put it on the deck more or less the car. You maybe the car bottoms out going around the corner, and that is potentially a catastrophic issue. And you know, okay, you could say, well, you could bottom it out with the other coil over it's lower. Yeah, you could. You could. But if you did, you'd have to be driving over like quite a, a major bump in the road that you really you should be observing and avoiding. Whereas if you set the suspension, if you set the car on the ground, maybe quite like an innocuous bump is enough to bottom out the car or hit the bottom of the car. That could leave you, if it's around the corner, maybe you lose steering. Like this is extreme guys, but it's, a, it's potentially a possibility. You could lose steering going around the corner if you hit the bump in the wrong way. Um, you could damage the car, damage the engine, damage the sump on, on, an, on an innocuous bump. I know I've done that. Uh, bump steer is another one. Again, it depends how bumpy the road is and it depends how low it's gone. But you've got the potential to set the suspension very low. So you've got the potential to get catastrophic bump steer. What is bump steer? If you're going around the corner, and there's a bump in the corner, as the suspension absorbs the bump, it adjusts the steering wheel, it pulls the steering wheel, which at best is annoying, at worst is potentially dangerous. Again, depends how low you go, but if you go extreme, which you can with the independent bottom bracket, that is a big thing to take into consideration is bump steer. Another issue you potentially have is the suspension binding on the, on the, on parts of the car. So for example, 
with the Audi stuff, the uh, anti-roll bar can be uh, an issue with it, uh, with the suspension fouling the uh, anti-roll bar if you set, set them too low. That's a classic example and you don't really have to go, and you don't even have to go that low to get that issue. But if you go in, you know, really low, you know, God knows what could be foul and what. You know, you could have wishbone hitting the body, dampers hitting the body, uh, fouling the steering rack, bending parts. You know, there they could be potentially a plethora of problems if you go uh, too extreme, you know. Uh, and basically, that, that's it. So, how would I score that one? I'm going to score that to the European manufacturers and I'm going to score it for two points because it is uh, quite a major thing. If I can just go off on a tangent, even though you've got a huge range of adjustment with the independent bottom bracket, I would say for a road car, there's only a small window where the suspension is going to be, forming at, before, be performing at its best anyway. And if you go outside of that, you're going to be reducing the performance of the car, reducing the cornering limits, reducing the acceleration, which completely defeats the purpose of uh, of fitting uh, the performance suspension in the first place. Even though you have a greater uh, range of adjustment with the independent bottom bracket, I'm going to give half a point to the uh, European manufacturers because just to acknowledge that even though the height adjustment is less, any more height adjustment could well be wasted, i.e. makes the car perform worse. So I'll give a, like I said, I'll give the European car manufacturers half a point back for that. Half a point back for that. Guys, I, I don't know what the scores are. Um, but hopefully it is a, a representative uh, score at the end. Height adjustment is only one part of the buying decision with coilovers. So, um, you know, subscribe to the channel uh, for when I do like part two, which may be on uh, something else. I'll probably do one on top mounts maybe. Uh, maybe we'll do one on damping but for this round anyway the winner is as always thank you for watching guys if you enjoyed the video please subscribe if you su if you subscribe already thank you for subscribing uh, look after yourself and i'll see you again next time